Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Money, Sex, and God. This is Genevieve. I am so happy to be here again with you on Money, Sex, and God. This is the place where we talk about all the things that we're not used to talking about, all the things that in your past may have not been on the table, may have not been okay for you to discuss, for you to dive into. And today's episode is a super, super yummy, super juicy, super naughty one that we will be diving into. Um, and if this, if you're watching this live and it feels really juicy, it feels like you wanna share this with people, go ahead and share this off, share this unto your friends. You can also tag people, um, you can like this, you could do whatever you'd like to just make sure that this conversation gets out there because with today, we are going to be talking about kink. We are going to be talking about the transformational power of kink. We're going to be talking about what's possible when you dive into kink. And before I bring my guest on, I see him on deck, which I'm super excited about. Before I bring my guest on, I just want to mention that everyone who is watching this recording tonight or in the replay, has a free ticket to my 2.5 day online live event coming out at the end of this month. We are going to be playing in all things kink and all things naughty and all things sexy September 25th to the 27th. It is the place for you to reclaim your bliss and alchemize your suffering, to remember who you are and do it within deep interactive community. This is a $300 online event that you can all get for free by just clicking the link in the feed. I'm going to post it in just a second. So just know that, make sure your friends come. Last time we had 85, 90 people. I'm planning on getting even more today. So it's going to be super hot and super juicy. So let me tell you a little bit about the guest who is going to be coming on today. So um, this is someone that I met in the world, actually, when I was a professional dominatrix. It's, uh, it was a long time ago, <laughs> not to age myself, but it was a while ago. And I knew of him in this world because he was someone who we really, you know, it, as a kink community, we knew that he was someone that we could listen to, someone that we could refer people to, someone whose integrity was matched by uh, how he showed up in the kink community and in BDSM. And, and those of you that play in the kink or BDSM community know that it is a pretty close knit community. So this has been um, a brother of mine for a very long time. I got to see him again in Costa Rica just a few years ago uh, when we were doing a sex retreat and his skills and who he is now has been even more profound, even better, um, even greater. So I'm really excited to share him with you, but it looks like he's having a few technical issues. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna start off the conversation and then bring him in, I'm, I'm guessing at the perfect moment. So the first thing I want you to dive into is just knowing, just knowing that this conversation tonight is going to be around kink. Just knowing that this conversation tonight is going to be around the taboo and around the naughty, what comes up for you? What do you notice in your body? For me, I get like a turn on in my nipples. I start to feel an aliveness and a fire running through my body. I start to feel this connection to the places in myself that desire uh, surrender, that desire power or control. So just tap in, just feel that first into what's showing up for you. And I mentioned that today is going to be all about kink, all about naughty and all about the taboo. And I just want to start out with a few definitions. Uh, so kink in its nature is anything that is taboo for you. That's defined by my colleague Jaya. Um, and I think that's a beautiful way of describing it, a beautiful way of tapping into what kink actually is. What this means is that if you are someone sexually who likes to always have sex in the bedroom and then one day you have sex in the kitchen and it feels naughty, awesome. You are now a kinkster, <laughs> right? You are now a kinkster. Uh, my journey in kink goes back over a decade now and um, gosh, almost two decades now um, with being my first turn on, my first place to arousal, my first place to remembering who I was. And I was able to transform so much of my pain through kink, 
right? Through this world that I really want to make sure you can dive into tonight. Many of you are probably wondering, how do I get started? Many of you are wondering, how do I do this safely? Many of you are probably wondering, where do I even start? It's such a huge world. So I want to bring in our guests now. We have Orpheus Black coming on. I'm going to go ahead and bring him in. And those of you that are watching, just say hi to Orpheus. Let him know that you're watching live. If you're watching replay, just say hi anyways. Um, and Orpheus, it looks like, let's see, here we go. Looks like he's almost coming on. There, there he is. Yep, yep, almost there. We just have the unmute now because you're muted. And then we're good. It looks like you're still muted, Orpheus. There you are. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh my God, this was such a challenge. <laughs> Thank you for running through the hoops. <laughs> all, these fire, uh, all these fires that are coming up for us and uh, power outages and everything else. So I am so sorry that I was not able to be on time, but hopefully uh, this engaging uh, conversation is going to be uh, make up for it. Beautiful. No, I, no worries at all. I always trust, right? And whatever appears. And I think it was a great opportunity. I just got the audience ready for kind of giving them some background on what kink is and giving them some background on who you are a little bit and, and kind of how we know each other and the realms that we've played in. And now you get to be here, which is even better. So now we can, we can dive in even more. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. You've been on a few times on the show. So thank you for coming back. And you you're such a great uh, host. I mean, you're, you're one of the best ones and I've been on television, on news and all these other things. And you are by far one of my best. Uh, <laughs> I love it. You want to get the good stuff out of me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> in a way it is perfect. <laughs> Yay. That makes me so happy. I'm so glad that you're back. Awesome. 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 So let's, let's play a little bit. Let's play. Um, can you start by just telling everyone who you are a little bit? I know you've got some professional cred. I told them already about like your emotional integrity of who you are and who you are in kink, but just a little bit of any professional stuff that you want to give them before we dive into. So they know who you, you know, a little bit more of who you are. Yeah, definitely. Again, my name is Orpheus Black and I am a three-time leather title holder. What that means is I've been elected by multiple bodies to represent both kink, BDSM, fetish, uh, to the broad public. Um, I and my partner Indigo of 25 years, who was both my sub, my, my slave, my, my love, my partner, uh, we've just decided to kind of just take on this world of alternative loving, you know what I mean? Um, we've been on uh, Playboy and um, I've worked with numerous, I'm also an expert, sorry, I just thought about this. I'm also a thought of as an expert in the state of California around breath play. So if something happens around breath play in, in courts, if they need an expert to come in and talk about erotic asphyxiation or autoerotic asphyxiation, I come in and I explain to them what BDSM is, what negotiation is, and what breath play is, and what people get out of it. And that oftentimes it is consensual, and this is what consensual looks like, and this is what non-consensual looks like. So I do that whole thing. And um, I work with uh, the Erotic Blueprints, you know, as uh, a part of their teaching course. And I've been featured with them a number of times. And yeah, I don't so know what to myself. You're, you're the go-to kink. You're the go-to kink guy. You're the go-to kink master, right? Like, that's it. <laughs> like, like going into the courts, talking about his exficiation. That's like, you're winning at life. That's amazing. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. You know what? The day I don't have to go into a court. Yeah to talk about this is when I'm winning. The job is to get everyone educated so that they understand what they're engaging in, why they're engaging in it, and what the risk versus reward narrative is. For me, that's really the important part. Yeah, and I can feel that, right? I can feel that in you. Let's start with that space of, of the vision of why do you do this work? Like, why does it feel so important to educate people around kink, to educate my audience who's watching? They're all saying hi, by the way. Um, <laughs> the audience who's watching um, around kink, why is it important? Kink, let's, let's start with what kink is by my definition, Great. okay? Kink, for me, is an umbrella term. 
It is any deviation from what you feel is normal sweat sexual behavior. So we all experience kink because we have this idea of, oh, my friends aren't doing that. My, my family's not doing that. This is not happening out in the real world. And so I am kinky because I'm getting my hands bound or I'm letting them spank my butt, right? Or maybe they, they climax on my body or something like that. That is what we consider kink, right? It's anything that you feel is a deviation from normal sexual behavior. Hmm. That being said, those deviations can cause a person to feel anxiety, shame, stress. It, it, you know, not being able to speak and live your truth can cause shame, anxiety, and stress. You know, not being able to talk to your partner or having a secret can cause shame, anxiety, stress, and that puts a damper on our sex life. It hinders our relationships in many ways. So what we want to do is educate people so they can be free to truly explore not just their role, but their identity. Those are two different things. And very few of us get to really figure out who we are authentically. Mm, tell me more about role versus identity. I have a feeling there's some juice in there. There's definitely some juice in there. Um, Eric Erickson, who is an educational theorist uh, in the early part of um, early part of the, 19th, uh, the 20th century, really wrote on this. And um, what he says is, we've been mother. We know how to perform mother. We know how to perform daughter. We know how to perform wife. We know how, we've been taught by society how to be good friends and so on and so forth. Those are all roles. Mm -hmm. Now, if I say something like, be natural, be you, people are like, I, I don't know how to do me. I don't know how to be me, right? And so there's an issue there. What we can do through kink is to better explore who you are, mm -hmm. not to perform better roles, not to be a better student, not to be a better mom, not to be a better daughter, but to be a better you. Mm -hmm. This Sexual exploration is just a conduit by which we access the authentic you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking to, and get, that's what I'm looking to do through educating on kink. Mm, so take us through an example of, as I'm really feeling you here, and this is something that I've seen happen with dozens and dozens of clients too, right? That as they claim their eros, their erotic energy, it's all of a sudden they're in their authentic, they know who they are, right? And that's how I found me, quote unquote, was through my sexuality as well. So this, let's say that, and the, the kind of where I want to focus today's topic on is, is the transformation that can happen in the world of kink, right? And mm -hmm. so if someone comes in and they're in this space of, I don't know who I am, I've shut that part of me down. I've played, you know, let's just take a mom, for example, right? I've been a mom for 20 years, right? I've been married for 30, whatever. My sex life is shut down. I've got this nagging part of me that wants to play in kink, but I don't even know, I don't know who I am. So what do I do, right? How does she, like, what would be her journey of finding out her essence? What would you take her through? How would she find that in herself? Well, that's a great, I'm great. I'm glad you used that frame. Most people experience transformation unwillingly. <laughs> it's just happening. Transformation is not consensual in most cases. Yeah. What I would say is normal, and we'll use the mom, is I've done the mom thing. My kids are away at college. Uh, I've been a wife forever. When do I get to start experiencing me? What am I into? What is it that I want? Now that I have all this free time, I need to start changing mm -hmm. and change happens. Problem is, is that they don't understand how to guide that change. So that includes their partner. So it includes their family. So it includes their friends. All mm -hmm. they see is this person is getting really weird, going <laughs> on really weird trips, you know, going to classes that we have no idea about using terms like transition and evolution and all these other things. And now you're alienating your friends. We have to take time to incorporate your environment, mm. your external family, your internal family, right? And your partner. And that happens through a deep exploration of self. 
right? The primal narrative. Who can you not help but be, mm. right? If I dropped you off anywhere in the world, you would still be this person, <laughs> right? It starts there and it evolves out. You know, everything in your world is an external manifestation of an internal process. You if it be the change you want to see, which is what Gandhi said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So this is how it happens in, in, in most spaces. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. So how would, you know, I know my story with that was, was playing in kink and finding out who I will always be, right? <laughs> like no matter what, you drop me anywhere and I'll do this, I'll be this, um, mm. was by putting myself in a lot of new situations with the, the container and consent in BDSM and in kink and, and trying on these different identities, so to speak, and then grabbing pieces, right? Be like, well, this is the through line. Like, and I wasn't doing it so intellectually. It was more just like the energetics of it. I started to adapt in my system until after a while I was like, like when I first entered kink and I'm, I'm telling you this story because I'm curious if you could speak to why this happened more. But when, I, when I wait, it's like, I have my theory, but I'm curious as to how it happened for right. you or what you've seen. So I, I first started kink as a dominatrix feeling very shy and I had a lot of social anxiety. Like that's when I stepped into domination, it was like, I couldn't, it's hard to imagine, but I had a hard time speaking. <laughs> like now I don't shut the fuck up, but I had a hard time speaking back then. Right. Um, and I had a hard time owning my aggression and owning my anger, right? And my power in my, in like my solar plexus is what I'm kind of feeling. And then what, so what I did was I started to play in these different identities of being a dom and playing and, mm. and then I would just take energy from the ones that felt the most resonant with, with who I was playing, playing in it in a really like safe container that I knew felt like I could play there. Right. And then I would just let go of the pieces that didn't feel like me. And over time I became, you know, who I am now. I created myself, so to speak in that way. Is that the process that you see people going through or do you find it to be different than that? And, and what do you think, like, is that always what happens in kink? Yeah. You know, it's not always what happens, but what happens is the person realizes that there's a change that needs to happen and they're looking for a way. That's why they get into kink. They're looking for a conduit to change. They're looking for an access point. They're looking to access something external as a conduit to find something internal, you know, as above, so below, or the macro and the micro, right? Whatever happens on the inside happens on the outside and vice versa. So when you come into kink, you're looking to change. Mm -hmm. You're open to change. You're receptive to change. You're ready to play with who you think you are not realizing that you're going to change who you are. Uh-huh, uh-huh, right? uh-huh. Yeah, everyone watching, type that in. Like, I hope I just want everyone to like <laughs> write that, write down what Orphea just said as notes, because that is like golden right there. Um, it's golden. I love that. <laughs> I love that you mentioned that. And so one of the things that comes up a lot when people start, because they take my course and they, they start to realize that they have desires, right? And mm -hmm. fantasies and fetishes and and then they freak out, <laughs> right? Because they're like, uh, is it okay that I want to be beat to a pulp and tied and on the ground crying? Like, is that mm -hmm. normal, right? So they go into that space. What would you say to that? Because I know there's so many people watching that probably have that, right? So what would you say to that person? What should they do? I had a, so first of all, um, Something has to, something has, a perception has to be shattered in order to have a breakthrough. A perception has to be shattered in order to have a breakthrough. And oftentimes it's like, I don't know who I am anymore. That's the shattering of the perception. Yes. Right? Yes. The breakthrough yes. is, is when I say, what makes you thought that you ever knew who you were? <laughs> right? Yeah. Because imagine, I, I have a cup, right? And in this cup, you're born a vessel, right? And I put ice in there. And that first ice is what your family taught you. And the next ice is what your school taught you. And then the next ice is what your friends taught you and everything. And then I start pouring in life. There ain't a lot of room. And so I have to say, let's remove this. Do you need this? No, get rid of it. What do you need? This? No, get rid of it. Now let's give you some life. Mm. Let's breathe life into you. 
Let's give you the experience that are going to shape you in the way that you want to be shaped. Let's access you in the way that you want to be accessed. Let's have control over this transition that you're going through because the transition is going to happen no matter what. Yes. Let's get you involved. You want to talk about being empowered. I'm encouraging you to take charge of your transformation right now. Mm. Right. And so to access the primal, you have to go primal to access the intellectual. You have to go intellectual. Yes. Right. So that for me is the most important part when we're talking about a transformation. Mm. Hmm. So if they're so just kind of like going from what you just said, if someone has a fantasy, for example, of doing something very pri- like I, I when I was a dominatrix, I loved beating people up. Like there was like a really, I loved it. Like I wanted my fists involved. I wanted to be very physical. Like that felt really good to me. And I remember being like, "What's wrong with me? I'm so fucked up." Right at the time. Now I realize like I deeply wanted to be in my physical body. Mm -hmm. deep deeply wanted to feel my muscles I wanted to feel my strength and that was my way of finding that and now I can whenever I need to feel in my body I just feel my strength again right and I use it as as a trigger point to come back into that that being so would you kind of say that the fantasies could be almost like a signpost of where the transformation is leading them Yes and no, because, <laughs> okay. you know, because when we talk about fantasy, there's two sides. It's, it's what's being done to me and what's happening to me or what I'm doing to someone else and how I'm interpreting. Uh, uh-huh. Right. So it's top and bottom. You ha- and both have a dichotomy to it. Mm. Right. So when you want to be rough and you want to tumble and you want to feel and you want to be in this space of exploring your your body, your masculine or your deep and primal sensual sacred self right that's one aspect of it but what about the shadow where is the shadow come up in the into this where we start talking about i want contact with another human being i want to feel another person's body because i don't know what i feel like until i feel someone else against me Mm. i want to know what i feel like and i need you to do that I need to feel you on my fists and on my hands and on my face. I need to smell you. Mm. I need to smell something that's not me so I can understand what I smell like, Mm. right? I need to hear someone else's voice to contrast my own. This is the deep sexual, I mean, the deep uh, shadow that we need to experience in order to understand who we are separate from other, how we understand self as opposed to other, Mm. right? That's the vulnerable components that we don't want to examine because we don't want to have to need people, but we need people. And we need people to be a part of our exploration. Yes. Right? If they're not a part of our exploration, then we're not really exploring. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right? We're voyeurs. We're watchers. We're ghosts. Yes. Just moving through the world. Right. I want to revive people. I want to remind you what your skin feels like, what your body feels like. You have pain receptors for a reason. Right. Right. To feel pain. And what we call pain is just extreme sensation. Mm -hmm. Right. Just like pleasure is another form of extreme uh, sensation. But you have a predisposition to one and avoidant of the other. So there's a whole part of your body that you are not exploring, a whole part of your being that you're not touching. Yes. Everyone write that shit down too. Write it down. (laughs) (laughs) Write it down. What happens? And I'm like, I've seen this over and over again. So I'm sure you have. What happens when people avoid their, that pain body? A limited exploration of pain means a limited exploration of pleasure. Mm -hmm. You know, pain is the salt that brings definition to every other sensation, right? It contrasts everything. Have a meal with no salt on it, right? <laughs> right, and it's, it's horrible. Have salt by itself, it's horrible. Bring them together and you explore tastes and sensations and have an experience that you would have not had before without, mm. right? Now, remember, now your body has a memory, your body memory, your body is going to remember each feeling, each sensation, and will have a desire for an aspect of it. 
mm -hmm. a craving for an aspect of it because you fed it what it needs, what it requires. And everyone requires something different, right? I, I like vegetables. I don't like all vegetables, right? <laughs> I like meat. I don't like all meat, right? Right. But there's certain things that I have a disposition to. Yes, right. And this is where we start building. We start mm. building because it gives you something deeply and spiritually satisfying. So you might want flogging, but not want spanking. You might want spanking, but not want caning. You might want hair pulling, but not face slapping. Whatever it is, find what speaks to you and continue to have a dialogue with that thing. Yes. You were saying that my whole body was like feeling each thing and was like, yeah, I'll have that. And I'll have that. And I'll have that. And I'll have that. I'd like that too. Yeah. You could do the slapping too. Like, oh, no, we're fine. Um, <laughs> that was funny. My body just responded to those words. Right. And that's what's so beautiful is that like, as, as the shame releases around kink, right. And you can just live mm. fully in it, then you can turn yourself on fucking all day long. Right. right. Like I'm like, I'm working right now and my body is in turn on and it mm -hmm. has been all right. Because all I need to do is think about it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the real amazing superpowers of kink that I've seen, like that ability to just be in that turned on space because of the thought of the thing, right. True. The yeah. trigger. Um, yeah. And I, I think the other superpower you mentioned so brilliantly, I'm so glad you did is the transformation of pain and pleasure. And how, what I love that you said is that you can't have salt without the food or food without the salt. They, it's not just about feeling the pain. I see this a lot, right? Feeling right. the pain forever and not adding mm -hmm. any pleasure. It's like, right. right. Or only pleasure all the time, right. which I, I see. And it stays surface, right? Right. There's a depth that's missing. And so mm -hmm. In, in, in kink, right. Bringing both together creates an alchemical tool. Right, right. This, right. Is, this is, since we're going to get an alchemy, alchemic symbolism, if you have a five-pointed star, right, mm -hmm. it means mind over body. It's literally Leonardo da Vinci's man who's standing there with his legs apart and his arms open his head. Flip it side down, it's body over mind. Yes. Right? And this is literally what we're doing, two halves at the same time. I need to overthink everything. Oh, no, I just need to go in my body. I need to overthink everything. I need to go in my body, right? That's, that's a problem. But when you look at the same problem from a Buddhist perspective, we put animals over human beings because their head is in line with their heart. Mm. Because mind and body are in line, mm. right? This is what we are doing. We are bringing these things like this and giving them equal standing uh -huh. right you don't have to like it you just have to feel it you mm. tell kids all that about vegetables you eat your vegetables i don't like it you don't have to like it but you need it right right, right. that's what this right. is about you need this thing and you're coming to me for this thing right. this thing that you're afraid to discuss with your partner the thing that you're afraid to have conversations with your friends about yes you want to share that experience with a complete stranger because you have feelings about it that you can't express to anyone else but someone like me, mm. right? And I feed you this thing, not because I want to, but because you need it. This isn't about what I want. This is about right. what you need. Exactly. Another key piece, right? It's never about what the dominant wants. It's about what the submissive needs. Key, key, mm -hmm. key, 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 right? right? I always teach this when I teach kink. People have no idea. <laughs> so I'm so right. glad that you said it so we could reiterate right. it out to the world. Always right. the dominant is in the service, right? You know why people, this is why we don't want, people don't want to speak to their needs because they, we've come up with terms like, you're so needy or you want so much or you, why do you, why do you want to just drag this out of me? I, you know what I mean? We don't want that. We don't want this unhealthy idea. I'm here to provide you with what you need. Speak to your wants, speak to your needs. Yes. Let me know if it's, in, if it's within my purview and we can negotiate it safely, I'm willing to do the same thing. This is the same uh, agreement that you have with a restaurant. It's just unspoken. Yes, right. You trust that they are not just handling your food that's been sitting out on the table somewhere and not prepping it right and not, you know what I mean? 
So yeah. you do the same thing with me. You have faith in them. You have faith in me to provide you with the thing that you need. That's why you came here mm-hmm. to a professional. Yes. And what I'm, what I'm hearing in this is like the need comes from, and just to kind of tie it back from the, to the beginning of what you were saying at the beginning of the conversation, the need comes from the nervous system deeply wanting to relax enough that this that the person can remember themselves right that they can feel themselves again right and so that part of you that's craving something that part of you that wants something taboo or naughty for you may actually be the doorway right to that transformation to find you again by Mm -hmm. just asking and claiming the desire and the need and then having someone give it to you right yeah and again when we talk about transformation the biggest transformation that a person will go through is asking for what they need. Yes. Right? Yes. It's like people would rather turn themselves off in areas mm. than to ask a partner, a loved one, a person that's invested in you and their relationship with you, right? They would rather turn it off than to ask them or, or, or for what they need. Yeah. That's really important. That's an important thing. So when I say, what is it that you desire? What is it that you want? What is it that you're looking for? We always go through this kind of thing. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh-huh. I don't know. And, then, you know, and the big one is you can't know what you don't know. That's a lie. You've been thinking about this whole, this moment, <laughs> the better part of your existence. You've just been too afraid to go after it. Yeah. Now, a friend of you gave you a gift certificate or a coupon or took you to an event. And now you're here and you're like, scared to ask me the thing that you've been fantasizing about forever uh-huh, 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 right uh-huh. And, and, and really let's talk about fantasy because a fantasy is really where a desire gets symbolism and energy right mm-hmm. it's where it gets to be able to be uh, have a tangible physical image yes. like it's a 2d projection of your desire mm-hmm. right that's really what it was but you had the desire before you had the fantasy Hmm. you had the fantasy before you had the courage to go out and get it yes right and now all you need is the conviction yes and the follow-through yes to have this moment yeah yeah beautiful gosh loving that so I I was just thinking about the time that we I had you were working as my dominant and you were like, what do you want? And I was like, well, this is my list of a million things that'll feel so great. And then let me just tell everyone watching, right? Like I knew exactly what I wanted. Orpheus did exactly what I wanted. And the end of my session, I was fully and completely fed. I was, mm. I fully and completely knew who I was in the moment, right? Because I was able to say, this is what I want, <laughs> like, right? And that was years of learning it. It doesn't need to necessarily take years, right? There's people that can help us do it faster now, but that is so key and, and see it as a service to you when you can mm-hmm. claim your desire. It's a service to you. Mm-hmm. So um, I know there's, there's people that want to jump in, right? And want to get started. Sure. And I, I was looking at your website and you're doing something online. Yes. Tell yes. us. Uh, in, in October, we are going to be doing a kink 101 class. Basically, really it's about coaching kink to uh, P, to your clients and, and so on and so forth. And so for me, this is an eight module course that we're going to go through. And it's really gonna take people step by step through the language, how to speak the language, the processes, how to create processes and rituals to help really get this out. The, the narratives that are unspoken, the shadow language mm-hmm. that your clients come to you with, right? And, uh, and many more things. We also do a role-playing thing that goes over really well where everybody <laughs> role plays with each other online and really has to go deep inside themselves to be in that space with a complete stranger, mm. right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And to me, this is the most growth uh, bringing process because there's a level of vulnerability in that space Yes. to be able to speak from your erotic persona, as we would say, and uh, the erotic blueprints, to be able to speak from your desire, to be able to embody that thing and to give it a language, to verbalize it, to show it in your mannerism and your demeanor. That is so much, it is so much, but people are so rewarded after because they rarely get to try it on, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? They're getting to try on their sexuality. Yeah. 
that is super important. So yeah, so you can go to OrpheusBlack.com and you Great. can uh, go through the pack, peruse the package, and uh, it's only going to be open to a limited amount of people. Great. Just a few people, so I can give very specific attention. So first come, first serve. Amazing, amazing. If you're thinking about it, I mean, definitely do it. I can speak to Orpheus's um, mastery, you know, and this is something I always say that in kink, especially, there's not many people that I refer people to, right? You're someone I do. <laughs> I just, I just, I've been in the scene forever, right? And I just am like, <laughs> because right? having the safety for the exploration is key. So if you're just starting out, making sure that you have someone that's going to help hold you in integrity with mm -hmm. yourself, right? And hold themselves in integrity to help guide you, even if it's to help other people find their kink, right? right. Like, it's, it's a through line of energy that you want to follow. You want to follow right. the energy of integrity. So um, this, if this is calling to you, I definitely would jump into it. And I just want to remind everyone else that's watching Pleasure Alchemy is happening soon in two and a half weeks, I think, that online weekend that I'm doing, two and a half days. We're going to be having uh, yummy segments on kink. I'll be able to work with your body or go into your body. It's all online, but it feels like we're in person. So if you haven't signed up yet for it just make sure you do that it's totally free for everyone watching this otherwise it's 300 bucks but if you're watching it make sure to get in there's gonna be a bunch of you it's fucking hot pleasure alchemy is so much fun um so i hope you guys get to come in and orpheus i'm so glad that i got to hang out with you again i hope i get to see you in person at some time soon i look um, forward to it I look yeah forward to it. we make we make magic every time we're together so i really appreciate the opportunity to to manifest with you Thank you. I agree. I agree. I'm so glad that you exist and the work that you're doing just keeps getting yummier and better and more profound. And that just really, it just settles my heart so much knowing that you exist on the planet and that you're doing this work. So thank you. Thank you so much again for coming on. And um, thank you to everyone who watched. Feel free to ask questions, share this with your friends, ask any comments, and we'll be able to get back to you when we can. Thank you again, Orpheus. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.